Hello, and welcome to another video in the series of tutorials that will help you become more familiar with Expressor. My name is Michael Tarallo. I am with the sales and marketing team at Expressor Software. In this brief video, I will show you how to use the read and write lookup table operators, as well as the lookup transformation rule that is defined in the transform operator. A lookup table is simply used to enrich an incoming data record with additional detail that can come from another source. Expressor uses the write lookup table operator to create an internal table that will store the lookup data that can then be used with the lookup transformation rule. This transformation rule is defined in the transform operator to further enrich the incoming data record. Please note, a read lookup table operator is simply used to just read data from a defined lookup table. You could use the read lookup table operator as another input source of data. I have already opened my existing workspace and created a project. I have also created a blank data flow and a file connection. Please refer to other tutorials in this series to learn how to perform some of those basic functions. Let's open up our data flow and let's define step one by right clicking and selecting rename and let's name this one load lookup. This will be step one of our multi-step data flow that will first load a lookup table and then the next step will use that lookup table. Now in order to load a lookup table, you need to specify what type of input source. For this example, we're going to use read file. I'm going to select my defined connection, and then we're going to select the new delimited schema option. Get data from file, select our file connection, and select our department's text. If I open that up, you will see that I have a department ID and a department name. Click Next, set all names from selected rows, and we'll call this our department's file schema. Make sure to skip the first header record, and now our read file operator is complete. The next step is to select write lookup table. And what this will do is take those particular attributes for ID and department name and write them to the internal structure that we will use within the transform rule within the transform operator. So here you'll notice we don't have a lookup table defined, so we can select the button next to the drop down and select new lookup table. This one can be called departments lookup table. Click create. Upon doing so, you have a layout structure where you can start manually defining attribute names and keys, or you can use the assignments that you have from existing composite types or atomic types that have been set up already. In this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to select assign shared, and then from the existing used by schema, we have our composite type, ID, and department. This is the one that comes out of the schema that we set up a moment ago for read file. We're just going to reuse that schema for the structure for our lookup table. Now upon doing that, we need to define a key. And what we can do is select our ID and click Add to New Key. We can leave the default name as Key 1. And now we have defined our key for the lookup table. This will be used within the transform rules operator when we perform a match on the incoming department ID from another file. We can click validate. It'll make sure the artifacts are valid. And then we can save this particular lookup table and it will populate accordingly. Now please note that if you want this table to be persistent, you can assign it to the file connection that you have defined and what this will do is write out a database file that is used for the lookup table. If you do not assign this connection, what will happen is, is at runtime, the database table is created, and then upon completion of the data flow, the database internal structure is removed. Let's go back to our data flow, and let's execute. And then upon looking at our statistics, we can see that four records were written to the lookup table. So let's add a new step and let's select read lookup table. And what read lookup table does is simply reads the lookup table that's been defined within the project. 
And then for argument's sake, we can say write file. Select our file connection. And then select new delimited schema from upstream output. And you can see that the ID and department will be written to the file. We'll call this department the limited schema. Call this file departments2.txt and include the header record. Now what we're also going to do, since we have the lookup table written already, I'm going to disable this step by right-clicking on the tab and selecting disable from the menu. And then we can enable step one and just execute this. Okay, so let's switch over to our file system. And you can see here, here's the departments2 file that we just created. And that is the actual execution of the reading of the lookup table and writing to file. Now you'll notice that I also defined the persistent file connection, and this is where the lookup table is written to within the project, basically wherever your file connection artifact points to. So now that we have a lookup table, let's create another step, and let's perform a read file operation. Select our file connection, select new delimited schema, and this time we're going to read in the employee data record. And you can see our employee data record has uh, department IDs. If we scroll over here, you can see department ID is one of the fields in the file. And then you can see we have corresponding numbers for the department IDs. Set all names to, to rows. And we'll call this one the employee delimited schema. Click finish. And skip our header record. So next what we're going to do is grab the transform operator. simply going to define a lookup transformation rule. So by going into the rules editor, I select new rule, but you'll notice this time I'll select lookup expression rule, and then you'll see the lookup table defined in the dropdown. Upon selecting that, you will see the keys that are expected to come in, and then also the attributes that are expected to come out, in this case, the department name. So we have our department ID, so we'll match that up to the lookup rule. And then you'll notice that department doesn't exist in our output. We simply just click add, and we'll call that department name. Click OK, and then map department name to department. That's all that's needed for the lookup rule. Now, we don't need department ID in our resulting output, so we're going to block that input, and it'll be removed from the list. And then for argument's sake here, what we're going to do is just select a few others, just so you can see the difference within the file. Okay, so that is the result of our transformation output. Then we will select write file, select our file connection, select new delimited schema from upstream output. Here's the outputs that are coming from the transform. These are the attributes that are going to be written as fields to the file. And we'll just call this one new data delimited schema. Click Finish, and we'll give it a file name, and we'll call this new data.txt, and we'll execute accordingly. Okay, upon doing so, you can see the statistics for read file, transform, and write file. If we go over to our file system, there's our new data.txt, and you can see here's the data that we read in. And there is sales, HR, accounting, HR, sales, etc. So that is the lookup rule now with the employee data and the enrichment occurring. I will have this project available as a download within the forum. Uh, please contact me as always if you have any questions at techevangelist at expressor-software.com. Thank you for your time and have a great day.